Hello everyone and welcome to this week's global business update with TA. Well, from the sustainability side, we are having some good news. Gabon, a famous African country that had more than half of their government budget coming through oil revenue, has decided to make reforestation their new business. That's right. They've given over 700,000 hectares of land for the development of new forests in the process of cooling down the already overheated climate temperatures and for doing this they are hoped to attract various funding from different agencies and already they managed to get more than 70 million dollars for that looks like a new direction for a lot of countries into the future also in india they are looking at low carbon emission steel that's a reliance group and a new startup in california is actually looking at low carbon emission cement the process of Converting limestone into cement is definitely having a big CO2 level, uh, CO2 emission levels, and the main goal of this new cement is try to do that with less carbon emissions. Sustainability is driving innovations around the world. What are you doing about it? It's a question you need to be asking as well. Meanwhile, in OPEC, there is bitter infighting and a lot of arguments. While all the OPEC countries were looking at increasing production capacity, looks like the United Arab Emirates is against it. And that could mean that they go back to the previous plan of not increasing output until 2022. Oil prices are on the rise. It's almost at $75. And this could push it way beyond $80 as well, driving inflation around the world even more further. Opening up for tourism was a heated debate and an argument in many countries. Well, looks like while Bali, the famous party capital of Indonesia, is actually shutting down places and asking all non-essential non workers to work from home. Greece has opened up with much criticism from the rest of the neighbors in Europe. Yes, but they've opened up their country for tourism. And guess what? They are having a record number of super yachts coming into their country where tourists eager to get out of their homes and go and celebrate, go and, go and have some vacation time is actually going over to Greece. Open up, take the security risk and uh, drive tourism or stay closed increase the levels of health and sacrifice tourism is indeed quite a catch-22 situation for many countries around the world today now speaking of the new financial center in europe so many countries are actually wanting to get that title for their cities but looks like paris is coming out on top due to the brexit as many financial powerhouses move their head office out of london and as london loses the status as the finance capital of the world, Paris is already trying to get some of their business and they managed to get JP Morgan to set up their new European headquarters in that city. And this is despite some very progressive developments between the EU and Britain for areas such as allowing free data flow between the countries. And if that didn't happen, there would have been billions of dollars worth uh, digital trade definitely being jeopardized as well. Let's see how that gets developed in the long run. On a different tone, we see that Osamu Nagayama, the chairman of Toshiba, has been ousted, which is a rare victory for the activist investors in an otherwise tight-lipped uh, economy with regard to corporate governance, which is Japan. They managed to oust him over allegations of misconduct and mismanagement and fraud and corporate governance failure. While they appoint the CEO as an interim chair, they are on the look for a new chairman for the organization. Looks like even in Japan, the corporate governance landscape is changing quite dramatically. On a final note, well, the talk of the town is about a global tax on some of these giant conglomerates, especially in the tech world, while many countries are coming together to impose a minimum global tax on some of the big data giants such as Facebook and Google and they're looking at a minimum of 15% around the world for these uh, behemoths of the tech world. Some countries such as Ireland are a little bit against it, saying that their minimum tax of 12.5% is something they are not willing to change. But so many countries, almost 130 plus countries are united in one voice, wanting to have a common tax on these data giants implied as well. How far it will be successful remains to be seen. That's it for this week. And no matter what business you are in, stay busy, stay safe and keep booming.